Hey, welcome to this week's video. So because of lockdown, we've not actually been doing that much recording. Um, we've actually been helping around the farm. I've been doing some ancestry stuff and you've just been doing some. I've been doing hard grafting farm work, been laying down new road uh, driveways um, for the farm. So that's what I've been doing, yeah. So we haven't been doing that much videoing and recording. And to be honest, we've not been doing that much things that are interesting and different. Yeah. Uh, we haven't even managed to go for a, a walk over the last week. So we thought we'd sit down and talk about something that we think that might help you. Yeah, so the thing that we're going to talk about is obviously the insurance. We made a video, uh, two videos ago, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, I think About so. um, the insurance problems that we had. And they were sorted out, I think, two days, a day or two days after that video was came out. Um, so obviously we've sorted it out. So we thought we'd sit down and do a proper video about it. Uh, and it might actually help you guys if someone's in the same situation as us, which I'm sure there is, especially at the minute with the DVLA, they seem a bit strict, a bit too strict for me, but that's their, their decision. So when we first bought the van and decided to convert a van into a camper van, we didn't really think much about the insurance. We thought it'd be really mm. easy and simple to change over. It'd be like you sign a form, go get this camper van. Yeah. We'd get the logbook changed and it'd be all really simple. Yeah, we should have done more research. Yeah, it wasn't until we got to the end when we wanted to change it over and actually sort the insurance out to actually cover the stuff that was in the back that we'd done that mm. we found out that it wasn't as simple as just contacting the EVLA saying wanting to change it into a camper van. Yeah, so it seems like it used to be like that, um, but then they changed it and made it a lot stricter. And it seems like from the criteria that they have on their sheet, like the tick boxes, it seems like no VW camper van, modern one, uh, can get converted to a camper van on the DVLA because it says it has to have a high top and pop top is not included in that. Yeah. So unless you stick like a fiberglass high top on top of the camper the van, um, you ain't going to get accepted. And they make that's one thing I don't like about the VWs the high tops on them, they really do look horrible, don't they? Yeah, they look really ugly. Yeah, we yeah. haven't seen it. Okay. It looks like a no. massive beacon <laughs> or something. You don't look, uh, we, we're not a big fan of that, so we don't really want to do that. Yeah, so the issue we had was. Um, we ticked all the interior ones, all the interior boxes on the DVLA checklist. We we done all them. They, we had all them inside the van. That was no, there was no issues in that at all. Um, it was the exterior like criteria that we yeah. failed on everything. We didn't have anything on there. So it had like two windows, not including the front windows. We only have one. Um, we didn't really want to put a second one in, mainly for heat retention and the fact we wanted to keep it as stealthy as possible. Yeah. Um, so that was the uh, fly. <laughs> Joy's living on the farm, eh? Um, yeah. So. We didn't obviously want to put a second window in, and then you have to have a high top. Clearly, ours don't have a high top. Um, and graphics. Uh, graphics, which and again, we didn't want to put graphics on because of the fact that we wanted to kind of keep it as stealthy as possible. I don't really mind about putting graphics on. I don't mind on. it. If we had to have done it, I would have done it, but yeah, I'm not yeah, doing the other course. things to do yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Like, to be fair, we, did, we, we sat down and we was like, we'll do whatever it needs to do to get it there. Then we looked at the list and thought, no, nah, we're not doing that. Because obviously to do high top, an extra window, graphics, and an awning, yeah, that was you have to put on. Didn't mention that one. Um, that's obviously, it'll cost way too much. You know what I mean? It wouldn't be like worth it for us. We're not going to necessarily use them. I'll get the benefit of it. Um, and obviously you're looking at probably a grand, maybe, I don't, I'm not too sure, but I think it's about 700 just for the high top without it fitted. And I wouldn't want to fit that, you know what I mean? Because obviously that seems like quite a big job. So I'd pay someone to fit that. So yeah, you might as well just get a normal insurance. So we thought this leads on to the second issue. As but we, we first started off thinking that we would just keep it as a van. We looked online yeah. and everyone said that it's legal to have the camper van as a van still and you can get van insurance. So then we was like, okay, we'll just keep it as a normal van. So we got a quote and it was for me and Tabitha, I think it was like £900. It was 800 but it was high 800 say £900. Um, and we went through the whole quote, clicked through, uh, got their number because we had to ring them up, so we rang them up. And then they asked us about the van, we obviously told them what was in the back, um, and they were like, no, we wouldn't insure you for that. So that was out the window. I rang the second company that was on the list, and they were basically connected with the first company. Mm -hmm. And then all the quotes after that were just getting really, really expensive. There was up to like £1,600 and or we were something. Just was like, like, we're no. not going to bother paying that. We was in a really bad situation there where we didn't know how we was going to get the van insured look at the minute it's fine we're on private land no one could touch yeah. us we're not driving the van and tab has access to her sister's car she's fully insured on that um so if we need to go out for food or anything like that we'd be fine but obviously that wasn't a solution to our issue we needed to get a solution so we started doing a bit more digging and you looked on facebook didn't you yeah because i was like sure that we're not going to be the only people who've had this problem yeah because obviously a lot of people have complained about dvla things so yeah there's definitely going to be people in the exact same situation yeah so i looked on facebook because i thought there's going to be facebook groups on like camper vanning it started bringing up some 
um, names of companies and the fact you need to go for modified van insurance so basically it's so it can it helps you if you're doing a van up and it's not ready to be converted into a camper but you can still legally drive it onto the road yeah. or like us we kind of can't get dvla uh, yeah. camper van change yeah so it was a guy that worked for brent acorn which is the company i've actually gone with is called brent acorn insurance yeah. um they're kind of like a middleman but they do specialist insurance for loads of different things um and they do full and part conversion uh camper vans which is ours is obviously full conversion camper van um but one of them was on there on uh, some thread saying about that Brent A could do modified van insurance and they'll insure your camper van even if it's not registered as a camper van. Um, yeah. So we rang them up. No, that was it. We went to ring them up and because it was a bank holiday weekend, yeah. they were sure. <laughs> um, and I don't know, and maybe you're the same, but we don't keep track of days. We kind of just live each day as it is and we forget what day is what. Yeah. Um, so we, it weren't until we went to ring them up and they said they was closed because bank holiday and we thought, oh, damn it. <laughs> Uh, but luckily we could get a request a quote online so we did that and then they, uh, they said to get back to us in a couple of days we think us thinking because obviously it's um bank holiday yeah. it might be a few days longer especially with coronavirus and stuff so we was, weren't expecting anything for a few days we did a couple more quotes one was with i think it was admiral i'm pretty sure it was with yeah, and that was as a modified ones. van yeah it was one of the big insurers um, expensive. Yeah, so for Tabitha alone, it was 1200 wasn't it, for you? Yeah, which is expensive. That's more than when I first passed my test. In the yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. And then for both of us, so we could have gotten insured in this, but for both of us, it was 2300 and there was no way we was paying that. We could have done, yeah. but obviously that had eaten into our travel money, and there's, yeah, there's no way we'd paid that. But luckily, Brent Aker got back to us the next day. Yeah, literally early. I think it was like 10 o'clock in yeah. the morning. Yeah, it, I think, don't even think it was that because I think I said by 10 o'clock I'll ring them up um, oh, yeah, because they so should be open then. And they think they contacted me about nine, half nine. Um, and can you remember how much it was? It was dead on £320. Yeah. Which I, when, I was, when they said it, I was like, yeah, I'll take that because when I'd got the quote for like £1,200 yeah. the day before, I was like, yeah, I'll take that because that was really cheap. That was cheap when I had my Yaris, my 15 my, my yeah. year old tour to Yaris. <laughs> but that is without me on the insurance, so yes. I'm not insured in the van. Um, they won't insure me until I'm 20, no, until I've had my license for a year. year yeah. So Brent Akers, you have to have your license for at least a year, um, which will obviously be November. Hopefully we'll still be travelling by then and we'll still be in the van and I can obviously just go on the insurance then. Yeah. Um, which is a bit annoying, but at least it's not two years. One year, um, well, it's not even one year, obviously, and then so it's well, a few months, I suppose, now. Um, so that's not too bad, but the price difference is massive because to insure the van just as a van, no modifications, just a standard van, how much were you paying for that? 600 was it or something like that? 800 pounds, and that was just oh, 3,000 miles. So the yeah. Brent Aker one as well that I've gone for is 15,000 miles. Cause, yeah. Um, Although we're not travelling at the minute, hopefully at some point we'll be able to travel. So with Brent Aker, the person on the phone was really nice for you, wasn't he? Yeah, he was one of the best customer service guys I've spoke to in a while. Yeah. Especially with insurance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he weren't in a rush. He was working from home as well, because obviously most people are working from home at the minute. Um, so he had his kids in the background, wasn't it? Was, yeah. it, was, it, was it him who had the kids in the background? Yeah, so that was quite fun. Um, a bit different to your normal call centre. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so they've, they've obviously the van's fully insured now, we haven't got to worry about it, it's covered, especially for all the things that are in it, like the cooker and the water and bed and stuff like that, that's all sorted. Um, and if we do any more modifications to it, with Brent Aker, you don't have to pay to add them on, they, you just yeah. call them up, tell them what you've done and they'll add it onto the list and they, that's it, it's all, all done dusted. Um, so they definitely seem like the best and we'd definitely recommend them from yeah. our experience. So if we do do another van build, <laughs> I got that time, didn't I? I got it. I think so. Yeah, Go so if we do, do <laughs> so if we do do another van build, <laughs> we will definitely just ring up Brent Aker straight off the bat and get it insured through them. Because if we yeah. do do another van build, I keep saying that so many times, and it's like a tongue twister. <laughs> it won't be till November, um, October, November time. So I will be able to go on the insurance then as well. Yeah. Um, so if we do do one, that's when we'll do it, and we'll just ring them straight up, get it insured with them straight away, and then just kind of add every time we do the add something to it we can obviously just recall them up get it put on um but if we do do another van build one of the we probably will do a bigger van than this so this is how we got our van insured we hope we find this useful no not we find it useful you find it we useful. don't need to find it useful no. they do <laughs> okay i hope you find it useful <laughs> yes and that's it for this video so it's just a nice simple video of us sitting outside the van in sunshine you probably heard the birds and stuff it's peaceful nice and beautiful scenery um so that's it for this video don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one